Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be looking at whether something is polar or nonpolar and how you can tell. So if you have been following along in class, you know how to draw Lewis dot structures, and then you also know that there are different shapes that molecules can have, and then we call that Vesper theory. So if you combine those two things together, you're able to figure out whether something is polar or nonpolar. And so determining polarity is kind of like picturing the atoms as uh, being in a game of tug of war for electrons. And so you can picture certain elements are better at pulling on electrons than other elements are. Elements that are on the left side of the periodic table, those are going to be ones that aren't as good at attracting electrons to themselves. And elements that are on the right of the periodic table, excluding the noble gases, are better at pulling electrons to each other. So in case you forgot the term, we call that electronegativity. So some molecules have more electronegativity and are able to attract electrons a lot more. Now, what does that mean if you're looking at a molecule with electronegative atoms? Those electronegative atoms have a partial negative charge to them, okay? Think about it, electrons are negative. If you are pulling electrons to yourself, now you are going to have a overall partially negative charge. And so if you think about this as a game of tug of war, if you have an uneven pool of electrons, then that molecule is polar. Okay, that means that you have a partial negative part, the electronegative area, and then you have a partial positive part. And so that's an uneven uh, pulling of electrons, and so the molecule has to be polar. If, on the other hand, the pull is even, meaning that it is equal in all directions, then that means that the molecule is nonpolar. And so in order to determine polarity, like we said, you have to be able to draw the structure, Lewis dot structure-wise, and you have to understand the geometry. So hopefully you know how to do both of those things. If you don't, feel free to go back in your notes, look over what we've talked about, because it's going to be extremely important. Okay? First thing you need to do, go back in your notes to this chart. Remember on your formulas page, you have a chart like this on the front, and then inside of your notes, you have a chart like this also. So I want you to highlight three different geometries. It's these three, okay? So tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear. If you look at those three geometries, you'll see that they all have something in common, and that is that they have an equal pull on the electrons. If you take a look at these three, you have like less than uh, angles and stuff like that for all of those. And that means that there's going to be an uneven pulling of electrons. So assuming that your outer atoms are all the same, here's how this works. Label the blue ones as nonpolar and the red ones as polar. So the geometries that are in blue are normally going to be nonpolar things. And in our class, all of them will be. And then the red ones will always be polar. So again, make sure you know how to draw your structures, and then you can look at your chart to figure out what um, patterns there are. Notice the ones that have lone pairs of electrons on their central atom, those are polar, and the ones that don't, the ones that have just atoms surrounding them, pulling on everything equally, those are nonpolar. Okay, so there's only one other form of tug of war we need to talk about. What if there are only two elements? So that chart tells you if there's a central atom and then there are at least three atoms total inside of your molecule. What if there are only two? So let's use these two examples and figure out which is polar and which is nonpolar. So even though these both have a linear shape, okay, even though they both are flat, and have 180 degrees, they have different elements in them, okay? And so the tug of war is gonna be a little bit different. So this is what N2 would look like if you were to draw the Lewis dot structure correctly, and this is what HF would look like if you were to draw the Lewis dot structure correctly, okay? Notice that N2 would have an even pull of electrons because everything is symmetrical. Everything is nice and even on all sides. So that would be our nonpolar one. Notice the one on the right, HF, that would not be nonpolar, it would be polar because you have fluorine with all of these electrons around it. Electrons which are um, making fluorine now electronegative. Fluorine is better at attracting electrons to itself, whereas the hydrogen has less. So that would be a polar example of a molecule. So think about it as like a tug of war. N2 is evenly matched. One N and the other N are equal, whereas H and F, F has more pull on the electrons, so H would lose and so you'd have a, 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 a total polarity now to this molecule. All right. So remember, even pull, uneven pull.
So for our examples, I'm going to do one at a time. Uh, feel free to pause along the way and try to draw the Lewis dot structure and figure out the geometry so then you can see whether or not you know how to actually do this. Okay, so please pause along the way. Okay, NH3. So how do we draw NH3? I'm going to draw it totally flat. I'm not going to make it 3D. I'm just going to make it totally flat like we're used to drawing. This is what it would look like. Okay, so which shape best represents that? So if we're looking at shapes, I have three atoms and I have one lone pair of electrons. That means that I have a trigonal pyramid shape. Okay, and so trigonal pyramidal or trigonal pyramid shape, that is going to be an example of something that is polar because it has a lone pair of electrons on its central atom. Okay, next up, H2S. So if I were to draw H2S totally flat like the way we normally draw it, it would look something like this, okay? And so again, make sure you know how many lone pairs of electrons you have on your central atom. That means that it has a bent geometry and it has an angle much less than 109 degrees because notice in our column there on the right-hand side, there's only one that has two lone pairs of electrons, okay? And so that has to be... Um, bent or angular shape. And so that means that that is also going to be polar. Notice I have two lone pairs of electrons on my central atom, and so that is polar. CH4. So if I were to draw CH4, I have four atoms totally. I have no lone pairs of electrons. That would be a tetrahedral shape with 109 degrees. Notice that the pole would be equal in all directions, and so that would mean that that is nonpolar because the pole is equal. Next up, SO3. This one's kind of hard to draw, so make sure you actually try it on your own. SO3 would look like this, okay? I have three atoms. I have no lone pairs of electrons, so that would mean I have a trigonal planar uh, geometry, and that is nonpolar. You can picture the oxygens, if you were to draw this three-dimensionally, the oxygens would be pulling in all directions equally, and so that means that I would have a nonpolar geometry. Next up, CO2. We've drawn this one a lot. Hopefully you know by now that it has two atoms around it, no lone pairs of electrons. That means it is linear, and that means that we have a nice nonpolar geometry. HCl. Okay, now this only has two atoms, so I can't use my chart. I have to think about this as a game of tug of war. I only have two atoms. This is what it would look like if you were to draw it, and that is definitely uneven. Okay, so you have chlorine, which is electronegative and has all these electrons, and so it's pulling on all of these electrons, whereas hydrogen doesn't. So this would be an example of a very simple polar molecule. And again, if there are only two elements, it's not on your chart. You have to think about it. NO3 minus. Okay, so NO3 minus, that is a bracketed one because it's an ion. Again, I have three atoms, and I have no lone pairs of electrons on my central atom if you drew it correctly. And so that would mean I have a trigonal planar or a nonpolar geometry.